In this video, we're going to create a menu using a switch statement in C++. We'll create a menu for a bank machine that will allow a user to deposit money, withdraw money, and check their balance. First, we'll create a double variable called balance that's going to store the bank account balance. We'll also create a double variable called amount. It's going to store the amount for a withdrawal or a deposit. We'll also create a variable called choice that's going to store the choice that the user makes from the menu that's available to them. Now we're going to continually present the menu to the user until they decide to quit. So we'll create a bool variable called quit and we'll initialize it to false. And we're going to set quit to true when it's time to stop presenting the menu to the user because they've decided to quit. Next, we'll create a do while loop to continually present the menu to the user. So here we'll have do and then while not quit is true. So we're going to use this do while loop to continually present the menu to the user and we can stop the loop by setting quit to true, which will make not quit false. So next, with each loop iteration, we're going to present the menu to the user as a series of options that can be selected by entering a particular integer number. So here we'll have C out and then one deposit for the first option and then we'll have to withdraw for the second option. And then we'll have print balance for the third option. Then we'll have print balance and quit as the fourth option. And then for the fifth option, we'll have quit. We'll have C out five quit. And then next, we'll tell the user they can enter in a choice. So we'll say enter choice colon, and we'll prompt the user to enter in their choice. Now each menu option is followed by this end line here. That's going to make it so each option appears on a new line. Next, we'll use cn to store the choice that the user enters into the choice variable. So we'll have here cn choice to store the choice that the user enters into the choice variable. So now we can expect choice to store either one, two, three, four, or five, or possibly some invalid number. We can handle each one of these cases using a switch statement. So here we'll have switch and then choice. So the switch statement is going to look at the value that's currently in the choice variable that was just entered by the user. And we can handle each case with switch cases. So we'll have here case one. And case one is going to be the case that the user wants to deposit some money. So we'll prompt the user to enter the deposit amount with C out and then enter amount. Then we'll use C in to store the deposit amount into the amount variable. So we'll have C in and then amount. Then we'll add that amount to the balance because this is a deposit. So here we'll have balance plus equals amount to add the amount to the balance. Now, once this case has done its work, we want to use break. So we use break to stop the execution of any further statements in this switch statement. If we didn't use break, execution would actually continue down to any statements we have in case two. By using break, control flow is going to jump down here beneath the switch statement and the loop condition will actually be checked next. And if the condition is true, the menu will be presented again the user will make a choice again, and the switch statement will execute again. So next, let's implement menu option two and allow the user to withdraw some money. We'll have here again, C out, enter amount, to prompt the user to enter the withdraw amount. Then we'll have C in amount, to store the amount that the user enters into the amount variable. And this time, we're going to subtract the amount from the balance because the user is withdrawing money. And then again, we'll use break to stop the execution of statements in the switch. Now menu option three was to output the balance. So here we'll have case three and we'll output the balance. We'll have here C out balance colon followed by the balance value followed by an end line. And then we'll have break to again, stop the execution of statements in the switch. Now for the next menu option, we're not going to actually have a break statement because if you look at the menu option four here, 
it says print balance and quit. And then option five is quit. So for case five, we're going to implement the logic that allows the user to quit. But for case four, what we can do is just implement the logic that prints out the balance. We can then allow execution to continue on downwards into the statements of case five by simply omitting the break statement. So let's go over that. Down here in case four, we're again going to output the balance. We'll have here case four, C out, balance colon, balance followed by end line. But this time, we're not going to use break. Because we don't use break, execution is going to continue on downwards into the statements of this case, case five, where we're going to implement the logic to allow the user to quit. So here we'll have C out and goodbye to give the user a goodbye message. Then we'll set quit to true. By setting quit to true, we're going to cause the loop to stop because the loop condition is not quit. So not true is false and that's going to cause the loop to stop. Then up here we can have break. And again, break will stop the execution of any further statements in the switch. So if the user enters in option five, then these statements underneath case five will execute and the user will quit. But if the user enters in option four, then this cout statement here underneath case four will execute. But this time there's no break. So execution will actually continue. And these statements underneath case five will also execute. So that's using what's called fall through logic. And what we're doing is having this case here, case four, essentially also include the work done by this case here, case five, by allowing control flow to fall through into this case by omitting the break statement. Now, if none of these cases match what the user entered, the user must have entered something invalid. We can handle that using the default case. So down here we'll have default and the statements underneath default will execute if none of the above cases matched. So we'll have here C out invalid option entered followed by an end line. And this should do it here. After the switch statement executes, the loop will either continue to execute or not based on the value of quit. So we'll save compile and run our program to test it out. First, we can see the menu is presented to us. We'll enter in one for deposit then 200 for the amount. Then we'll try to print the balance by entering option three. And we can see that we do have a balance of 200. Then we'll try to use option two to withdraw money. We'll enter in an amount of 50. Then if we check the balance, we'll have a balance of 150, which is correct. If we enter in an invalid option, like let's say seven, we do get invalid option entered. And finally, we can use four print balance and quit. And we can see that we do get the balance output as well as the goodbye message before quitting. So this is how we can create a menu using a switch statement in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.